Okay, so I'm sorry for the audio in this section, but I don't have anything really to stand up the DSLR. So, what I'm doing instead is I am using the microphone from uh, the camera, and we're just going to go through it, you know, as such. Maybe I can just... Yeah. Hold on a second. I do not expect another one of these for a long fucking time, everyone. Okay, so to start this off, we have Brother Bear. Hey, look at that. We have something to display this on. And this is like a fuck up on it. A friend of mine built this shelf, and we. This should have gone the other way. And I probably could redo this, but I don't really feel like it could. You see all these, you saw all those fucking shelves, right? You really think Darth Broadway is the time to fuck with that again? Nope. Or risk fucking it up. Jesus Christ, there are cobwebs in this. Like, what the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna start getting some damn bug repellent or some shit. Right. We got the Toy Story films on Blu-ray. So we got the whole trilogy here. Now, why do I have two copies of this trilogy? Because I can. Simple as that. I've actually been thinking about... Um... I can't think of words right now. Um, then we have Short Circuit. This is a letterbox release. And... The thing about letterbox releases is that they work in the region free player. My back fucking hurts, by the way. We have the droids and the Ewok movie's official copy of the droids TV show. And an official copy of the Ewok show. The Ewok movies. Yet the holiday special doesn't. The Back to the Future animated cartoon. I don't know when that came out, nor do I care. Um, before my time, but I got it because it takes place after the series. It's G.I. Joe set. Um, never grew up with G.I. Joe. So you're probably wondering why the fuck do I have a G.I. Joe DVD set. Well, the reason I have a G.I. Joe DVD set because I just do. So there, that is my explanation. And we have Pat the Ennis Punk. Um, volume 1. Volume 2. I got these at Too Many Games. Psh, that fell off. I got these at Too Many Games. 20... Uh... 16. Um. Well, oh, get the fuck in there. Then we have Secret Origins, which is done by Linkara. And I just sat on some chords that hurt my ass. Always fun. Always fun. I'm just gonna do it from here. Fuck it. And we have this documentary about glass. And this other documentary about glass. I went to the Quarry Museum of Glass. And, uh... At some point in 2016. I think it was August. Yeah, it was definitely August of 2016. That was when I was working on that Harley Quinn Black Widow montage video, which I kind of like, but it also kind of cringe. The end trippet, which was about, like, some stealth transportation shit they did back during the Civil War. Or what you could classify itself as stealth, I guess. And this is a Glenn Curtis documentary. Um... 
It's a really interesting documentary. It's weird as hell. Like, I've never seen a DVD cover like this. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's horizontal. Like, not vertical, you know? Like, it's like this, but then... I don't know why. I didn't make it, though. Then we have Bleach. Season 1 of Bleach, anyway. I got this at uh, my old high school's little anime convention they did. Which is kind of nice, you know? They do that for people who can't really afford to go to standard conventions. And why is this shipping like that? I don't know, it's an old release, I guess. Shit. Sorry about that. HDMI thing. Um, National Treasure. Yeah. Layer Cake. This is a movie everyone says made James, made Daniel Craig a James Bond. And after watching it, yeah, I buy it. And then we have some Dark Horse comic book films. We have the mask and species. Uh, species is a Canadian import. The mask I got at a place called Atlantic Books, which closed down almost 10 years ago. That was a shame because they had a lot of comic books. Shitty comic books from the 90s, but comic books nonetheless. And we have the ultimate cut of Watchmen. And the theatrical cut of Watchmen. I love Watchmen. That's one of my favorite Zack Snyder films. If I could say what is probably Zack Snyder's best film, it's Watchmen. I'm trying to readjust because there's no chair and I have to do this on the I have to do this on the floor. And then we have a bunch of DC animated films, so we're gonna lay those out. Got Batman Under the Red Hood, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, uh, Justice League War, and Justice League Doom. Batman The Killing Joke. Great, great, decent, haven't seen that one, and I personally like it. Is it flawed? Hell yeah. Killing Joke is a flawed film. But I do enjoy it nonetheless. I think I should put this with Batman instead of... Oh, wait, and then we have the good Green Lantern movie. Which is direct-to-video. Go figure. And then we have this Shyamalan DVD set. Which I really like. Deluxe copy of The Sixth Sense. Great copy of Unbreakable. And Signs. Gorgeous releases of all those films, respectively. Just absolutely gorgeous releases. Please excuse me for a minute. Walking Phoenix is in one of these films. Walking Phoenix was also great in her, which I have not seen. I think I just kicked my microphone by accident. Yes, I did. So I don't know if I switched SD cards, but I'm going to find out if I did. I'm going to find out if I switched SD cards or not. And I'm sorry for the constant angle change, but you gotta understand, uh, it's a little out of my control. The Village, I haven't seen it, or it sucked. Why do I own it? Because I'm a schmuck. That almost rhymed, not really. Drag me to hell. They kill a cat in this fucking scene. Why would you kill it? Like the main character kills a kitten. 
It's like, why? Why? What the fuck? I, that was disturbing. I know it's horror, but there's no between just there's no between scary and just fucked up. Stoker loved this film very much. Was very surprised by it because I guess I was going through the collection. I'm like, what haven't I seen? Cause I, this always happens. Like I'm thinking about, oh, I should go to the movies. Too expensive. What do I do? Eighteen shelves worth of movies. You dumbass. Go through them. Um. Silent Hill Revelations. I don't know why I own it. Sucker Punch. There's a great story behind this movie. So. I saw this at Too Many Games in 2016, right? And I busted, like, Ian and Pat from uh, the, complete, the Completely Unnecessary Podcast. Pat the Enemy's Punk, also. So, I am just doing this because I wanted to, like, laugh a little bit. And I say to, and I go, Ian, I got you your favorite movie! And then <laughs> Pat is laughing his ass off because I'm like, Yes, I've seen the podcast numerous times. Um, and Ian Ferguson wrote, Zack Snyder is a twat. Ian Ferguson. Ugh. It actually comes with both the extended and director's cut. The Man with the Iron Fists, 7-Eleven purchase. I am legend. I liked this movie. Tower Heist. Holy shit, that's got a cobweb on it. I thought it was okay. It's one of the few decent Brett Ryder films. And I say I hate when that happens. So then we have Now You See Me, which I haven't seen yet. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which I should really check out. The Searchers. I got this because Star Wars. Because this was one of the inspirations for Star Wars. Romeo and Juliet. I hated this movie in high school because the ending, how they did it, I thought it was so stupid. I should give it another chance before I start bitching, so, because that happened with The Great Gatsby. Gave The Great Gatsby another chance, and I enjoyed it. Taken? This movie's ten years old now. Or it will be. You know, it might be, depending on, it's currently December 31st. So depending on when this video is edited, um, it might be 2019, making that movie 10 years old. Non-stop. Because I like seeing Liam Neeson fuck shit up. A very most violent year. Mainly got this for Oscar Isaac and it looked like an interesting film that I have yet to see. This was an A24 release. Um, holy shit, that's David Oyelowo. Hmm. How have I not seen this yet? I've owned it for a few years. WTF. Romancing the Stone. Have, you know, we could just... I put all these up here because these are all kind of 80s fantasy things. Haven't seen it, haven't seen it. Saw a little bit of it in middle school. I think Ridley Scott. Yep, yeah, Ridley Scott did a uh, legend. Fairy 
first Bueller's Day Off. I've seen it and I enjoy it. Megamind, this is a very nostalgic movie from 2010. I enjoyed it very much. Earth from Above. Interesting documentary, but then they showed, uh, like, factory farming and shit. And I'm like, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. I know factory farming is terrible. That's why I stopped eating meat. God damn it. I don't want to see pigs tortured. Fuck. You know? Um, this is what I also got from the Corny Museum of Glass, and it was the last Blu-ray to fit on the shelf, so the last Blu-ray on the shelf was some random thing from a museum. So, that's the first part of Part 9 shot. So, I will see you in the other part of Part 9. Let's just get that over with. Fuck it. Okay, so the laundry's going on in the background, and we got the rest of part nine. And then we move on to part ten, which will be the shelves below. And um, that'll be it. And I'm putting the shades on in case I make a cameo. Sorry about the audio being shitty in the first part, but I had no choice. Gone with the Wind, a classic movie that's racist as fuck, and I haven't seen because it's got sorts, it's got all sorts of southern confederate revisionist bullshit, and I'm going, you should watch it because it's a classic film. You should watch it because it's a classic film. Put your political bias at the door. Put your political bias at the door. And then the historical part of me is like, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, I know it's bullshit, it's a fucking movie, but it's fucking bad bullshit, it's not like bullshit, like fucking Star Wars, Lady Stewart's and all sorts of crazy shit, which sounds in space. No, it's fucking racist bullshit, and it pisses me the fuck off. There's that. And we got both Attack of the 50 Foot Woman film. You could technically call Attack of the 50 Foot Cheerleader an Attack of the 50 Foot Woman film, but that's more of a parody and not really the same as these two films. I think, who do I think was the better Nance? Okay. I think overall this is the better movie. Allison Hayes is a better Nancy Archer. She had much more of an intimidating, badass, sexy presence. She was really sexy. Whew, damn, she was hot. And then we move on to this kind of King Kong thing going on. We've got King Kong, the original. Son of Kong, which I had to get resurfaced. And Mighty Joe Young, which isn't really a King Kong movie. Actually, it's not a King Kong movie. But it was made by Willis O'Brien. Or at least the effects were. Thank you, James Rolfe. Then we move on to the rest of this King Kong thing going on. We have King Kong versus Godzilla. This import DVD of King Kong from China. I think I told you a few times I got that from a store in Chinatown that's not there anymore. Got turned into a restaurant. You can see my little Chinatown vlog that I did a few days ago. Although, depending on the video, I don't know. I don't know. Time is making my brain hurt. American Splendor. Haven't seen it yet. We have a little bit of a Christopher Nolan thing going on, so let's just get all these fuckers out. We have Memento, which is great. Insomnia, which I haven't seen. The Prestige, which is fantastic. Um, Inception, which is going through some disrupt, but seems to work okay. Interstellar. Which is really great. Really surreal, though. Because the... Father sees the daughter die. From old age. <sighs> really great film, though. And yes, I keep the Christopher Nolan movies in chronological order. Obviously, the Dark Knight films are not present here because they are superhero films, whereas... It's kind of weird how this is set up. My collection's weird. The Rocky series. Let's show the first five off first. This is one of my favorite box sets of all time. 
Um, I think I gave the original DVD in this set away. Or I lost it, but it's most likely I gave it away. Since I can't find it. Rocky 2. Rocky 3. Rocky 4. Then we've got Rocky 5, Rocky Balboa, and Creed. Um, I think Rocky 5 has its moments of not sucking. Rocky Balboa, I think, is a great conclusion, and Creed is a, get, is a fantastic revival. Um, I look forward to seeing Creed 2, though, when I have the time. All that jazz. Hands down, one of my favorite movies of all time. I love that film. I saw that in Canada, and it was during a screening, and I just wanted to see it with my family, and I was like, I was blown away by it. I didn't see it all the way through at the time, but I've seen it twice since then. We have the Indiana Jones collection, which, yes, this is an official release. Unlike the last time I had it, because I did a compare and contrast video. You can check that out somewhere else. Um, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And yes, I have seen all of these except the fourth one. Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, and uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones has been a four film series for over a decade. And there's rumors of a fifth one, but I don't know. Ah, uh, motherfucker. Then we have the not Indiana Jones with Tomb Raider and the Adventures of Tintin. And yes, I own the Transformers films, although they might be getting better with Bumblebee. Transformers 1. This piece of shit. This thing, which I liked when I saw it, but I have not rewatched it. Because it's fucking long. And Age of Extinction, which is really fucking long. Apparently. And that's the laundry. And we have some Hitchcock stuff here. Got this nine film set. This other DVD set, which has some of the films from here, if not all of them. But I keep this set because it's in better quality than this set. And the movie Hitchcock with Anthony Hopkins, uh, Helen Mirren, and Scarlett Johansson. Um, Scarlett Johansson is really sexy in that film. Like, mm, really sexy. Um, this Alfred Hitchcock collection. And my Rusted to Hell Psycho Steelbook. Which doesn't look that bad from here, but here it's pretty fucking bad. I mean, it could be a lot worse, but... Damn. I'm trying to rebuy that one. Or just the film in general. Because that is rusted beyond all reason. We have this Psycho triple feature of... Psycho 2, Psycho 3, and Psycho 4. I have not rewatched Psycho 2, but I will at some point, and I have yet to see Psycho 3 or 4. But I will give both of those a chance. And we have Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park series, which has the Jurassic, the, the original trilogy, and Jurassic World. I put the Target exclusive bonus disc in a binder. Hopefully it's not going to disc route all to hell on me. We've got this little um, John Hughes collection. It's John Hughes trilogy, which has 16 candles, which is great, but problematic because of the Asian character. Breakfast Club, which is just brilliant filmmaking at its finest. Really good drama comedy thing. And Weird Science. I've seen both of these films twice. I've only seen Weird Science once. Back when the collection was more manageable. And we've got this history of space.
space documentary, which I got signed by a real astronaut in 2011. Right there. And I've cherished that for a long time. It's kind of amazing when you meet a real astronaut. I mean, that's a guy who went in the space. Like, holy shit. Anyway, that's it for part nine. Live long and prosper, and I'll see you in part ten.